I'm telling you, I got to laugh right now. I'm in, I'm in a, an emotional experience. That's what's going on. I'm coming in live literally 30, maybe 40 minutes max from translating. And for the first time ever, I'm going to do a live stream based on a translation that I just did within the hour. So usually it might, I might do something later on, but within, within the hour. So I'm within the hour of translating this. And I'm tore up. That's a fact. <laughs> I'm tore up, man. Y'all hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. That's, that's, that's the assignment from the gate. Hit the share button if you really, really, really love Yahuwah. Share it with somebody else. You can't hold it to yourself. I am in an emotional experience translating. I told Lena, I said, Lena, I just told my wife, I literally just sat down and taught my family what I'm going to teach y'all from what I translated. It was such a powerhouse emotional experience. I had to go teach my house first. Now I'm coming to teach my family in Yahuwah. But I first, I'm telling y'all the truth. I had to go teach my house first. When I'm going to teach y'all. Now I was going to come in because we talked about Mahashim Acts chapter 10 yesterday. And it was lit. It was fire. And in the back of my mind all day today. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and hit chapter 11 back to back so we can keep rolling into how the Guyim, the Gentiles, came into the fold of Yahuwah. I'm going to do that, but not today. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm going to do the real Mahashim, Acts chapter 17, that I just translated within the hour. I would have been on here with y'all a little bit earlier ago, about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I had to stop and take 20 minutes to teach my own personal house what I'm getting ready to teach y'all from the real true scriptures. Now I told Lena, I said, Lena, you know, I know the scriptures. You know, I know them. Now, I got a regimen that I do throughout the day. I got X amount of hours. I translate. Then I do some catching up. I've got people that are part of staff of my other, of my traditional businesses that are handling things. Shout out to them. But when we decided to do the campaign, because y'all contribute the way you do, it allowed us to bring some staff members that call on the name of Yahuwah into the fold to be able to help support me, to be able to translate with and do the work on the front lines that Yahuwah has for us, me, an emissary, an elder in the kingdom of Yahuwah. It allows me to be able to step up and put that hardcore majority of my time on the project. That's a shout out to y'all. That's a fact. It's you all. When we came up with the campaign philosophy, it was to expedite getting this word into the world. You all got to take care and feed your families. I got people that work with what we're doing. They got to feed their families. Lena and I and Kai we got to get something to eat. Got to get at least to get a sandwich. Right? I'm just telling you right now. It's you all. This, I'm telling you, it's y'all. Because this is going to happen. But it was going to happen. I, I underestimated how long it would take. I thought it would take from the time I thought about it a year and a half ago or so. I thought it'd take about two years. No, it's like a four-year project. It's a four-year project for real, for real. Why? 
because you got 400,000 errors just in the Greek New Testament text. Then you got thousands of errors in the Tanakh you got to sort through with all the Masoretic vowel pointing crap. When you see those little little squids and dots all over Hebrew words, that is satanic in my opinion. That's just me. Many other people feel the same. Y'all ready to go in? You gotta hit the like button. I'm just warming up for a few more seconds and I promise you, I even sound different to myself. Y'all probably think I sound different. I sound different because I'm different. This tripped me out. Just like... Translating the book of Mahashim, Acts, is literally like taking me to some other universe. Because I know the scriptures. But when you translate the scriptures after you know the scriptures, if you're like, okay, I got to go translate the scriptures that I know very well. I'm telling you right now. My sister Sherry, I already know. She know me good. She know this look in my eye. She know this voice tonality. My sister Sherry Harris, she go, uh-oh. I promise y'all, this one is Richter scale. This is like earthquaking time. You, It might hit you like that. It might not. I don't know. Luya said, man, it don't matter how long for me. I'm here for the duration. That's why I think it, so what I, I, because it takes more time than you could imagine, that's why I now believe the lives are so important because it brings you all in the journey of the translation process. Like, can y'all imagine this? I don't even know if y'all give yourselves enough credit. You don't give yourself enough credit. You being in here, through the process, me going live and talking to people, these things are evergreen, going to be known forever. And guess what? We, As the years go by, I don't know, I, I can't imagine Yahoo waiting a whole bunch, whole like a lot longer. I can't imagine him waiting a ton longer if we do what we're supposed to do. If we get this word out there like fast, that's why you see that website on the screen, tsnt.org. It's critical because it literally expedites the mission. Because the way this earth works is money to promote. Now you can promote for free every day. You can go stand out on the street corner. You can go down in the courtyard and you can impact. But you know what I told one of my favorite doctors that works inside of what we do here? Dr. Wright that y'all going to meet. I think it's the first time I might have mentioned his name here. Dr. Wright. Y'all going to meet Dr. Wright that highly respects the name of Yahuwah and his beautiful wife, Amber. I'm telling you right now. No, I'm going to get back to them later. Just get ready. You're going to hear from Dr. Wright in the virtual summit. No, I'm going to tell you what I told him. When he was working on me one time, and he's been Kai's doctor since Kai was about six months old. And that's why Kai has never had to take any type of uh, pharmaceuticals, drugs, ever. No vaccines, no nothing. I attribute that to Yahuwah, of course, first, sending us, because he works through humans on earth, Dr. Wright. And Dr. Wright, his protocols are on point. They're incredible. And it kept my child, who's now nine years old, out of hospitals, emergency rooms, out of drugs, Pharmaceuticals are drugs. It kept them out of that. I told Dr. Wright when I was in his office, I said, Doc, this office can't hold you. I told him that in 2016. 
I said, this, this office can't hold you. He said, what do you mean? I said, your skill set and the way you do things from a medical standpoint, and of his state at that time, he was the president of the Naturopathic Doctors Association for that entire state. Y'all know there's 50 states. It's a big state in the USA. We'll talk about that later. He was the president of that entire Naturopathic Doctors Association. I said, this office can't hold you. The world has to have you. And see, that's you. That's all of you. Where you're at now can't hold you. And now when you understand the scriptures, you understand, no, 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 no. This geographical location can't hold us. And that's why the internet is so powerful. It takes the holds off of us. Y'all see it? So if we can strategically market on the internet that takes the holds off of us, that allows us to get our message out, pow, we win. Yahuwah comes back. Bam. All right, let's teach. Now we got it warmed up. I see y'all dropping fire emojis in the chat. Y'all know what it takes to get it going. We got to get the fire emojis in the chat. Suhei said, this is so special. I, I'm going to put that up, Suhei. What she said. See if it'll fit on the screen. She put up a lot. She goes, this is so special, Brother Jay. This family is growing spiritually and loving. I pray for all of you and your families. May Yahuwah's favor be upon all. Y'all give a shout out to Suhei for that message. Isn't that precious? And that's the truth. That is the truth. Like we, we're organically growing in Yahuwah. Like just organic. But we're doing it because our space that we're each physically in, those of us that are followers of Yahuwah, our physical space, we got so much power of Yahuwah in us, our physical space can't hold us. Y'all know what I'm saying? Our physical space cannot hold us. Ain't gonna happen. Sue, they give you a shout out. Woo! You deserve it, my sis. All right, I'm going in. Look, y'all, 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 who said, I see it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I see it. It's just organic. We're just here talking because we understand our assignment. And once you do, that's why when we do these little things, hit the like button, hit the share button. Like my brother, Yahoo, Yahoo, we notice he's now sharing it on his Facebook page. He's got a nice following over there that respects him. And so they're hearing, and a lot of people ain't going to say much. But they know when they hear from me, they ain't nothing but the truth. They might want to deny it, but when they go in the bathroom and they're brushing their teeth in the sink, they looking at the spirit behind their eyeballs. They're going, man, I heard the truth. Am I going to accept it or deny it? That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Everybody that hears us knows it's the truth. They're just deciding whether they're going to believe it or not. They're going to accept it. And the re and if that, the, guess what? If they don't love the truth, they'll be sent a delusion. You ain't got to worry about it. So watch this word. I'm doing no shout outs. I got to get right into it because I'm tore up from the gate. Mahashim Acts chapter 17. I can't wait to get down into this chapter. And I'm telling everybody from this point on, don't say nothing to me about Shaul being a false prophet or none of the other nonsense y'all talk out there in the world. I don't hear no more of that until you have properly read a real translation of the book of Acts, Mahashim. Once you have truly read, slowly work your way through Mahashim, you're going to know who Shaul is. 
And you're going to know how to follow Yahuwah. And you're going to know how to become tough. And you're going to know how to stop being weak. Stop having 3D pity parties. All that's going to fade away. No, it's going to burn away because Yahuwah Ruah is going to come and get up in you and burn it out. You can't go through the book of Mahashim. You can't do it. Lena, make sure you text my dad. Tell him this is going on in case he didn't get the message. He always gets upset. My dad now gets upset. He goes, man, sometimes I don't get the, the notifications. Lena, make sure to text that. Hey, Kai, tell your mama to text your granddaddy. I'm telling you, it's on. Once you really dig in with my Hashim, I told Lena today, I said, you know what? I'm thinking about put once I'm done with my Hashim, I'm thinking about putting that on the digital collection, the True Scriptures digital collection. Thank you, babe. I'm thinking about putting it on there because I'm like, this is going, anybody that can get through this and accept the book of Mahashim, we don't even need it. We don't need to read a whole bunch of other stuff. After you read the first four books, don't quote me nothing about Shaul from any other book first before you quote me something he said in Mahashim. That's how I feel about it. I'm done. I don't hear nothing you quote to me from Shaul, Paul, from any other book first before you give me a quote. So even, hey, even in their pagan versions, they struggle to make Shaul look like a false prophet. They struggle because it's so on point. You want to know why? They dealing with Kappa and the emissaries, the apostles. They dealing with the real, real. They're dealing with Yaakov, the brother of Yahushua. they dealing with the real ones. So they're like, man, how are we going to make Paul look crazy up in Mahashim? They can't do it. They cannot do it up in there. They can't do it. Watch. <laughs> Act 17, Mahashim, for the first time I've ever done it. Within an hour. I'm talking about like 30, 40 minutes ago. Well, I've been here for 20. It's within the hour. This was translated. So from the time I started this, it's within 40 minutes or so. And it's on. <laughs> Chapter 17. After Shaul and those who were with him had passed through, I'm a peopleis. I'm a peopleis. I gotta get all these words. I'm translating the heck out of these words. Bunch of words. That's why it takes me a lot of time because y'all gonna get an index when the true scriptures are done. You're gonna get an index of all these proper names. Shout out for that. So it takes me extra time to make sure y'all don't get greeked up. And Apollonia. Y'all ever heard of Apollonia? See, what most people don't understand is those that were the Abari, the Yahudim, they would not speak Greek. Hardly anybody gets that point. But Jerome and all those philosophers, right? They told the truth. They said, no, no, no. They'd rather eat pork, shrimp, lobster, unclean at than to speak Greek. So they didn't speak. They didn't speak Greek language. They don't want to speak any Greek words. So what I'm tripping on is everybody that's done these for the years. I said, Lena, they keep putting, even the ones that have removed the pagan name, they keep putting Greek names in there because they're going, oh, this was written in Greek. They give into it by even putting a Greek name. The Yahudim would not say Greek names, Greek words. They'd hear your name and then they would say your name the best they could in a bari 
or Aramit. Ain't hardly a one in a gazillion people ever thought of that point and understood it and recognized it. You got to have Yahuwah in you to know what I just said. You got He got to be in you. So I'm translating from Yahuwah Ruah. And I'm using common sense as I study etymology and go back through time to go, uh uh. Those that were real Yahudim, they were not going to speak Greek. They were going to make them Greeks speak Aramit or Abari. And that's a fact. So everybody that would convert. They were converting to the ways of the Yahudim, not vice versa. It wasn't the Yahudim learning to speak Greek. It was the Greeks learning to speak Abari and Aramit. Who's ever told you that? Ever. You got to put the time and go back and see what they were doing. All right. Now that I've established that point, that's how fresh this is. I'm still getting the right. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i have it. You give me six months. Because I was seeing, I've been doing this for years. I go, this is the way I'm saying it to you. I'm a people-lease. I'm a people-lease. And a pulunia. Yeah. You notice it? Apollonia. They say Apollonia. Apol Apollonia. Remember in Purple Rain, Prince Apollonia? That's a Greek name. If you see it in, in an IA, it's a Greek name. Every time, I've never told y'all this, y'all on another level that fast. What I'm going to tell you is not being taught on the internet. Anytime you see an IA at the end of a word, Apollonia, right? You know that's part of Yahuwah's name is getting covered. You know that IA is really a Y-A-H every time. <laughs> I don't know what y'all going to do with this. I can't even get going yet before we give praise to Yahuwah. You, every time you see a word in, the, in IA, in the scriptures, queen in the building with that super. Every time you see it, you know they have now removed the Yah from that name. Every time, Brother Joe. Every time. So instead of Apollonia, it's Apollonia. <laughs> y'all, y'all, who's tore up? <laughs> hey, y'all, Yahoo, brother. Mm, shout out to you. He said from the Ruah, he was told to wait before he jumped on beating Shaul down. Shaul ain't no joke. We got to know what was going on with Shaul. I know. Sue, hey, you like that? Y'all, we put out Bologna's name in the chat. The real name. That's the Greek goddess. That's right, Gerald. That's a Greek goddess. So when you say Apollonia in the scriptures, you are giving homage. Gerald picked it up. You give homage to these Greek gods and all of these other scriptures out here. Keep doing it. You know how we say Alleluia and everybody in the world says Alleluia. Y'all know that? Everybody in the world. It's the only word in the world that everybody pronounces say Alleluia. Because Yahuwah makes you praise him through it. What Satan has done is made the translators translate and make you pay homage to all the Allahim through their names. So they don't think it's a big deal. Oh, no, no, no. Because it was written in Greek or because it's talking about Greeks. Let's go ahead and say what the Greeks said their name was. No. <clears throat> no. Because they weren't going to say their names in Greek. They didn't want to say anything Greek. 
They hated it. It was considered an abomination to speak the Greek language. Do we not understand that? I, I guess I got to go back and do that slideshow again. All right, I'm, I'm going to put her name. It's many words ago. <laughs> All right, here we go. I just translated this within an hour. Y'all want it? Now watch. It's going in the chat. Do y'all understand the philosophy, what I'm saying? Only the spirit can tell you what I'm telling you. Only the spirit of Yahuwah. You can't. Otherwise, you're going to give in to all these pagan deities. These Allahim going to keep getting praised. Look in the chat. And I gave you the Hebrew letters. Look. Y'all see it? Ah, poo, lu, ni, ya. There it is. I'm reading the letters from right to left. Just slow down. Ah, poo, lu, ni, ya. You see them last two letters? That's ya. But when you see them last two letters, I A, that every time you see them last two letters in I A, you are paying homage to a Greek god, almost for sure. <laughs> almost for sure. Who cracked that code? Who cracked that code in the world? I'm telling you right now, I don't know anybody else cracked that code, but promote the truth in the family here through myself as an emissary. You got to be an emissary to crack that. <laughs> you got to be an emissary to crack it. You got it, William? I'm just, I'm going to go back in, but I think this point just as I'm looking at it, I'm like, hold on. I got to make sure they know that point that I have nailed. I told Lena, I said, Lena, I done cracked a major code in the last. I've realized this in the last about two weeks. In the last two weeks, I, I picked it up. I said, ah, I got it. Because that's why I don't just do straight translating. I would miss it. I go and I sit there and look at the Greek while I'm also doing in the Aramaic and the Hebrew. I'm going back and forth. What do you think, Queen? That's king to business for real. <laughs> That's king to business for real. What do y'all think? That right there is cracking a code. I just tore, y'all ready? Tear it down! I just, hey, I'm telling you right now, we just tore something down. You see IA at the end of a name of a person or a city, you can almost guarantee they're paying homage to a pagan, G-O-D. It's almost a guarantee. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? I'll tell y'all that next one later. I got a big one, another big one. Joe Carton said, tear it the hell down. <laughs> tear it the hell on down. <laughs> Don't we do it? Hey, Yamani, we do it consistently in here. Come on, Hannah. Come on, Rush. Come on, Jermaine. Come on, Katie. We consistently tear it down, Sister Ebony. We don't play. You come to promote the truth, you're going to get it unadulterated. It's going to be 3D. I'm going back in Acts chapter 17. The real one, finally. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Just had dropped the nuke. <laughs> After Shaul and those who were with him had passed through, Ami, Pipulis, and Apollonia, it's a city, they went to 
Tashalanik, what they call Thessalonica. That's Tashalanik. There was an assembly of the Yahudim there. We hear assembly of the Yahudim. This is your regular people that's been following the ways of Masha for years. That's the assembly of the Yahudim. It doesn't mean whether they're believers or non-believers, more than likely. If you say they're going to a town and they pull up on an assembly of the Yahudim, they have not accepted Yahuwah Mashiach yet. That's 99% of the time in these early days. As it was Shaul's custom, he went there to worship. He spoke to the people there on three different Shabbat days. So we know he was there at least three weeks. And he reasoned with them from the scriptures. He showed from the scriptures how the Mashiach had to suffer, but that he would be raised back to life from death. Shaul told them that Yahusha of Nazareth is the Mashiach from the scriptures that he was talking about. Some of them believed what Shaul had said, and they joined Shaul and Silas, Silas, and became followers of Yahuwah Mashiach, devout Guyim Gentile. That's people that were Gentiles speaking Greek or whatever, and they learned to start speaking Hebrew and Aramaic. If you hear the word devout, that means they learned to start speaking that language. Like me, I'm a devout Spanish person. I'm learning seriously to become fluent in Spanish. I'm devout in it, okay? Devout Guyim Gentiles and many important women. Shout out to the women, by the way. Well, you're going to notice in the building of the momentum of Yahuwah Mashiach that almost every time it's very important women that were helping push this through. Devout Guyim and many important women believe the message about the Mashiach. But the unbelieving Yahudim, identify him, there, became jealous and got some troublemakers from the marketplace, got some old whippersnappers from the marketplace to start a riot in the city. You can do that right now in any city. You go, they go pay people some money and cause all kind of crazy chaos. That's what the non-believing Yahudim did. Caused a riot. They wanted to drag Shaul, Paul, and Silas, Silas, out into the mob. But they went into the home of Gisun, sign named Jason. Jason's real name is Gisun. The mob went, <laughs> the mob went to the home of Gisun, Jason, to look for Shaul and Silas, but they could not find him there. So they must have done ducked out and hit him. They went in, they must have ducked out. They probably they slipped out the back door or something, right? When they could not locate them, they drug Gisun, Jason and some of the other believers out into the mob. Now, all Shaul's doing is went into the I call, sign name temple, sign name synagogue. He just went in and started talking to him about, hey, this is the Messiah who had to suffer. I'm sh and he's showing them in the scriptures. Most people don't get it at all that Shaul was like a lawyer. When it come to the Tanakh, he understood the scriptures front and back. So he's pointing to them, proving this Yahusha from Nazareth, he's who the scriptures are talking about. And people will start coming in and really getting into it. And them old heads will be sitting there going, no, nah, no, nah, no. He getting too much attention. And they would go hire some people, go, look. Go cause some trouble. We got to get these guys out of here. 
So because they couldn't find Shaul, they went and got who invited him into their home. Gisun, Jason. So they drug him out to the mob. Then they took him to the city authorities and shouted, Shaul and Silas have been causing trouble everywhere they go. Now they have come here. This Gisun, Jason, has welcomed them into his home and all of them are breaking the laws of Caesar. Now we know what's going down. Broken the laws of Caesar. Rome. By claiming that Yahuwah Mashiach is the king. So now they're pinning up Yahuwah Mashiach against the Caesar. They know they can get people really worked up. Are y'all getting ready to get ready for this? I'm warming this up. This ain't nothing but a major warm up. It's beautiful too. So they're getting them all stirred up. The officials and the people with them there were upset about hearing these things. So they made Giyu soon and the other believers pay bail. They like extorted money from them. They had to pay bail before they let them go. That same night, the brothers and sisters immediately sent Shaul and Silas to Baruiah. Y'all know what Baruiah is? I'm going to put it in the chat. It's going to get some respect. This is good. <laughs> This is going to get real good. You ready? Ah, that's why. Hold on. I'm going to put this in the chat. Y'all need to see this. You're getting a Hebrew lesson. You're getting, because this is written in Hebrew, by the way. That's why you're going to get a Hebrew lesson on this. What's, what is Bari, Baruia? What's Baruia? I'm going to put it in the chat. Well, you ain't got to guess ever again. Bam, Berea. Y'all got it? Berea. Very significant. People respect. Pastors in these pagan Christian churches, they be shouting out about the Bereans. Oh, yeah, they be going at it. Let's go talk about it. So when this, when they got all up on them in that, those cities and they ready to go get Shaul and anybody with them, they upset about it. They sent them to where? Baruia. After they were, and watch, after him, this is Shaul and Silas, after they arrived there, they went directly into the assembly of the Yahudim. You can't put Shaul and Silas and the, and the emissaries and the believers, you can't put them in a city and there be a temple, synagogue, which is an assembly. You can't put them there and they don't go down there. They go right up in there. They up in there. The Yahudim, verse 11, from Baruia were more honorable than the unbelieving Yahudim in Tashlanik. So in Thessalonia, they were foul over there. Many of those leaders who called themselves Yahudim. The Bariuim, so that's the Bereans, received the word of Yahuwah Mashiach with great eagerness. And here's what we hear quoted in churches all over the place. And they won't follow it for, for nothing. They examined the scriptures closely every day. To see if the things Shaul and Silas 
was saying was true. Talk to me, fam. That's really what's going on now at this section of the live. Everybody that's listening, that's of a different belief, would you stop and do what the Bereans did? The bar Yaim, would you stop and do what they did? Examine. Like we're preaching Yahuwah through Yahuwah Mashiach for the repentance, for the forgiveness, so you can repent of your sins. That's what we're preaching. We claim Yahuwah. We disclaim God, Lord, Jesus, and everything else. Go to the scriptures and examine them. If you do what the Bereans did, you will come to the conclusion that the only name to be saved in is Yahuwah. That's it. You see, if you examine your piece of trash, Holy Bible, you see that? I'm calling it trash. It's a shame. But even if you examine it, you go closely and look at it. My sister Amber House put up today in these different translations. She put up the preface and highlighted it. I think she got it from a post we did earlier a while back. And it admits in most of these prefaces of these, quote, Bibles, which is a pagan word. Examine the word holy and Bible. Examine those two words. Stop. Just go examine the word holy. Where did it come from? You can't just haphazardly say words and act like you won't have any consequence to it. Even in your scriptures, no, Bible, it tells you by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Let me find it for you. Yeah, before I go on. Yeah, before I go on. I want to talk to all the non-believers. I want to talk to every non-believer and I'm going into your great granddaddy of belief. It's the King James. Quit playing. Matthew, Matiyahu 1237. Let's don't play. Let's get to the meat of it because you don't think words mean a lot. Those of you that don't believe in Yahuwah, it's only because you don't think your words are important. You think it's what you believe in your heart. That's what you think. I'm going to Matthew 12, 37. I'm going to see in your pagan driven scriptures. I'm calling it pagan. I'm telling you what it is because I done examined it. Once I examined this holy Bible, I found it to be trash. 1237, for by thy words, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. I want to know for all the non-believers, are you going to toss that scripture out? You going to tie you Are you going to toss that? Y'all know. <laughs> it's in red. Y'all know how they would do that? For J-E-S-U-S, for O-E-Zeus, look, where is it at? There it is. You can't hardly see it, but that's in red letters. Because Jesus said it. All right. If he said it. He said, by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. But you keep saying no. You're even telling Jesus no. You, you've been trained to be so disobedient, 
so lawless that even the one you follow, you don't follow them. You don't even follow. That's what I found. When I was following Jesus, I looked around and people didn't even follow Jesus. You don't even follow Jesus. You just won't believe he's going to save you. From what? Okay, in your Holy Bible, Jesus told you, that pagan deity Jesus told you, by, your wor by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. What you going to do? You going to say, no, Jesus, you will lie. Call Jesus a liar, because he is. That's what I would do. Call him what he is. He a, he a liar. Because you don't believe in words. So since you don't believe him, why don't you open up and do what the Bereans did? Why don't you examine? Stop playing. Just examine. Something. Do more than nothing. You got to do some examination. Let's go. So they were considered more noble. Why? They were considered more honorable. Why? Because they actually examined the scriptures closely every day to see if the things that Shaul, if I'm talking like Shaul and Silas, if what they were saying was true. And after they examined it, verse 12, many of the Yahudim in Bar Baruia, Berea, came to believe, as well as a good number of reputable UNE, Greek women. See that? Always these powerhouse women hanging around. Look at all these arrogant men full of pride. Shout out. The U and E, the Greek women, hey, they converted. And many U and E men said, well, wait a minute. This makes too much sense. So he got Shaul and, and, and they got. So Shaul and Silas got Yahudim that was non-believers in Yahushua. They went in the scriptures because they were only dealing with the Tanakh. By the way, there was no New Testament news alert. There was no Barit Hadash. They were only talking from the Tanakh as they did every Shabbat for generations. Shaul took them to, this, to the Tanakh, which they've been following for generations. And he said, look here, this is him. And they said, we believe. Many of them did. In Baria. And guess what happened? The unbelieving Yahudim in Thessalonica. Thessalonica. When we talk about the Thessalonians, those unbelieving Yahudim over there heard about what Shaul and Silas was doing. So they heard about Shaul proclaiming the word of Alua in Baria. So they went to Baruya and started stirring up trouble and trying to turn the crowds against Shaul, Silas and those with him, Silas and those with him. The brothers and sisters from Baruya immediately, immediately sent Shaul away to the seacoast. They said, get him out of here. They said, get him out of here. They loved him. They said, we got to protect him. So they protected him, took him out to the seacoast, put some ushers with him. But the, but Silas and Timothy, Timothy, they stayed back, but they hung low. 15. Those who safely escorted Shaul Led him as far as Atuna. Here goes another word. You're not going to hear them real Abari, them real Hebrew people. 
they're not going to say the word Athens. They're not going to say it. I'm convinced. They're not going to say the word Athens. It's a Greek word. They're not saying it. They said what it would say in Hebrew. Atuna. So Athens is Atuna. Now we know that at Greece is the epicenter of pagan idols to the max. That's where you get Zeus and Apollos and, and all of them. Poseidon, on and on and on. Aphrodite, it don't stop there. They are ridiculous in idols. Y'all hear what I, have, what I just said? They took him to the sea coast, and then they said, come on. We got to get you way out of way from here for a while. They took him over to Atuna, which is Greece. Then they returned with instructions for Silas, Silas, and Timothy, Timothy, to come to Shaul as quickly as they could. They said, come meet. So Shaul told him, go back and tell him as soon as they can. Get over here with me. Let's keep moving. The family, <laughs> everything from this point on is about to blaze. Should we stop the live stream now? We've been going for a little bit. This is a long setup. So maybe we should stop and come back for part two. If y'all don't want to stop, put some fire emojis in the chat. <laughs> Share it out. I'm not going on unless we got this algorithm lit up because it ain't going to do nothing but go berserk from this point on. It's not going to do nothing. I don't even know if some of y'all going to go to sleep tonight. If we don't see at least 20 fire emojis, different people doing fire, we need at least 20. We got over 100 on the live. Over 100 people on the live. Can we get at least, oh man, y'all done blew up 20 that fast? Woo! We got at least 20 that fast. Some of y'all need to cop y'all need to copy and put on a note all your fire emojis because we got that's what's gonna get the algorithm rocking. Look at look at the numbers going up. Tick, tick, tick. Y'all hit them fire emojis from time to time. Can't keep doing it. You gotta do it from time to time. And the algorithm and the people gonna get lit up. They're gonna get touched. I don't know why. It just does. The fire emojis are in the chat. So I'm going back in because we lit it up. I appreciate y'all, but get ready. Get ready. They, he told them, get, the, get my boys back here with me as soon as possible. Verse 16, while Shaul waited for Silas and Timothy in Atuna, that's Athens, he was deeply disturbed, displeased to find that that city was Full of idols. We know that now. You can go there today. It's jam-packed with idols. Go to Athens today. It's loaded. It's packed to the max. They are the big influence for the Roman Catholic Church. That's why when you go in a Catholic church, it's loaded with idols. Hit the heart buttons, Amber said. Smash them up. Hey, we only got 64 likes. I don't even think I can keep going. We got to get more than that. We got over 100 people on the live. Everybody stop and just hit the like button. I'm going to hit a refresh. I'm going to see if we got people to know the assignment. I'm going to cut this thing short. I promise. I ain't playing. I want y'all to go be disciples. Touch other people. When you hit the like button, that means you're a witness. If you don't, you ain't Yahoo's witness. Quit playing. This is basic stuff. Thank you, Brother Joe. I'm checking the likes. I'm checking them. We're going up. Let's go. Woo! We're getting it in. Brother Joe said, if you believe that Yahushua is Yahuwah, you are my family and we are one on behalf of us. <laughs> we love you, Brother Jay. I love y'all back. 
Brother Joe ain't no joke. Now he's in that city, Brother Joe. I'm going to hit the refresh button one more time. I'm going to see if people get this. Look at the numbers. All you do is watch the numbers. They keep going up. Y'all keep hitting like. Y'all keep y'all keep dropping in comments and interacting. More people going to get saved. It's just going to happen. Look at them. They jumping up now. I appreciate y'all, fam. I see y'all working. Now watch this. He walking around. I want y'all. Now what we all going to do. Here's what we're all going to do. We're all going to act as if we're Shaul. We're Paul. Let's do our best to say, okay, I'm going to transport. I'm going to put my mind in his mind as best I can and go back there. And as I'm hearing the words, I want to work me through it. And what would I do? How would I do it? Man, y'all got to watch this. This is crazy. He was deeply displeased at all these idols. So he went into the assembly there. So there was some Yahudim in that city. And he reasoned with the Yahudim and the other devout converts. What's that mean? That's people from Greece. From Athens, Greece, who have what? They've converted and they're learning and they know. So they're either learning or they know Hebrew and Aramaic. That means they converted. And they're allowed, if they converted, to come into the high call. That's the temple, the assembly there. So, so Shaul's down there reasoning with them, talking to him about, and he's, what's he doing? He, he also shared the message about the Mashiach each day in the marketplace to, her, to whoever wanted to talk to him. So he's there reasoning. He's there to prove Yahusha of Nazareth is the Mashiach, has become Yahuwah Mashiach. That's what he's down there reasoning. But he's waiting on his boys. Silas and Timothy, they back in Baria, Berea. So he's like, man, what am I going to do with my time? Well, what does any real evangelist do with their time? You go spread the word of Yahuwah here, there, and everywhere. So doing it, if he wasn't in the temple, he was out in the, he was out in the marketplace. He was out in the, uh, the, 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 the center of the city. Talking to people. Anybody want to talk to him? Now watch this. Y'all got to put your seatbelts on. Certain Apicurus. That's the Epicureans. The real name is Apicurus. And Saduai. And it's this getting hot. So you got. Tell me words. Stoics. I'm translating a lot of words. Y'all catch this as fresh as you can catch fresh translation done. So the Stoics, real names are Satuai. The Epicureans who are believers. Thank you, Sister Queen. The Epicureans are Apicurus. They follow this dude called Epicure, who believed that there wasn't any creator and all that stuff. They believe they they just believe they like to intellectually philo they love philosophy. And they don't want to really believe in nothing, but they just want to talk about stuff and philosophize. So they decided to engage Shaul in discussion. Some of them would say eventually, what is this babbler trying to say? Others said, he seems to be proclaiming some foreign Allahim, some foreign God. <laughs> this is going to get really great. They said, they said this because he was preaching the Bashura, which is the good news about Yahuwah Mashiach and the resurrection. They laughing at him. They messing with him. Now watch. They got frustrated, so they grabbed him. 
and they took him before the council called Aripagus. Now, you know that U.S. means they worship Zeus. That's another hint. Anytime you see a U.S. at the end of a name, they were named after Zeus. Did y'all know that? They represent, they're promoting Zeus, Jesus. If it ever, ever ends in U.S., it is homage to Zeus one million percent of the time. Did you all know that? It's not even a question. Pegasus. Is it Pegasus? It's Peg you see that U.S.? You know. That's Zeus worship. <laughs> That's deep. So we know now they drug him, they grabbed him, they drug Shaul before the council of Arupagus. That means this council is Zeus worshipers. This council is Zeus worshipers, fam. So when they drug him in front of the Zeus worshiping council, they said to Shaul, hey, tell us what your teaching is all about that you were speaking. We have heard you speaking some strange things, and we want to know exactly what you mean. So they know what he was saying. Hey, <laughs> y'all put some funny stuff. They know. They know he was down there talking about Yahuwah Mashiach and the resurrection. They know that's against Zeus. They know it. So guess what they do? They said, come on. They got him in front of a council. Tell us. Now, everybody pay attention to what's next. Side, this is like a sidebar in the middle of the scriptures. So verse 21 of chapter 17 of Acts, Mahashim is a sidebar and says more than anything else. And this is Luca who wrote this, who wrote the book of Luke. This is Luca who's writing this book. More than anything else, the people of Atuna, that's Athens, and the foreigners living there love to hear new things and philosophies. They loved it. They just love to philosophize. People would move to Athens, Atuna, just so they can just spend their whole day doing this stuff. They just want to philosophize. They loved it. And they wanted every idol up and they would love to put up statues and then philosophize about it. They were idols to the, they were idol idolaters to the max. They loved it. So guess what? This is one of the greatest lessons and speeches that never gets talked about. Never. Never. We don't do no numerology here. Kick that out. So this is important. Never. They just didn't do it. Put your seatbelts on. I'm going in. I'm going in. Because this is, I, I had to go do a 20 minute conversation with my family based on this, these verses I'm about to share with you now. I did. And, and this ain't nothing but the, this is, I don't know why I don't ever get talked about. I don't know why I don't talk about it more, but that's going to change from now. See, people love the philosophy. Go on, tell us, show. Go ahead. Verse 22, Acts 17, 22, the real one. Shaul stood up 
in front of the Arapagus Council. Are y'all listening? Know what I'm saying? He then stands up in front of the Zeus worshiping council and said, people of Atuna, that's Athens, I can see that you are very religious. Y'all get ready to hear a master speak. This is some master speech going on. He said, I can see that you are very religious. As I was Walking and going through your city and looking at the things you worship, I found an altar with the words, all caps, to an unknown Alua. Y'all believe this? In Athens, in a tuna. In a tuna. What Shaul did was edify. Said, "Oh, y'all love religion. Oh, y'all very religious." And I can say y'all some. He ain't saying that. See, most of y'all gonna have to learn the ways of mastery. You about to hear. How do you deal? How do you navigate when you are around paganism everywhere? He said, I saw an altar with the words to an unknown Alua. So that means you must feel you are worshiping this Alua. But I find you really do not know him. Therefore, I want to tell you about him. <laughs> I about I almost want to run. I was in the room screaming. I'm translating and screaming. I want to run down the street because he flips the script on him. He flipped it. He said, "You got this statue up, and you're admitting we don't even know what to do with this." But we know there's something out there. So we're going to put this one to an unknown Alua. They got the words A-L-U-A-H on it. Alua. He said, but you don't know him because you just said he's unknown. He said, you don't know him. Well, since y'all don't know him, let me tell you about it. <laughs> y'all got to admit that's some fire. Man, he flipped it on him. Deontay, you are right. That's another level. Because everybody will be in their emotions. You don't got drug, basically, beyond your will. They want they dogging you. They're making fun of you. But you keep your cool. You keeping your cool. Because you know who you are. See, when Yahuwah is in you, you keep your cool. You don't argue. You ain't debating. He's going to give you what to say. You know what I'm saying, brother? Nerob down in Bangladesh about to run out. Nerob about to run out in the streets. <laughs> he says, you feel you are worshiping this Alua, but you don't really know him. Therefore, I want to tell you about him. This Alua that you call unknown, he says, this allure that you call unknown made the world and everything in it. He is the master of heaven and earth. And he does not live in Ahikal's temples made by human hands. He does not need help from anyone. He gives life, breath, and everything else to all people. From one person, this Alua, that you do not know. He made all the nations of people who live on earth. And he decided when and where every nation would be. This Alua, that you do not know, he has done all of this so that we would look for him, reach out to him, and then find him. 
He is not very far from us, from any of us. This allure that you do not know. He gives us the power to live, to move, and to be who we are. Just as some of your poets have already written. We are his children. This allure that you do not know. Since we are the children of this allure that you do not know, we must not think he is like an idol that is made. Now he's targeting that, that statue. But he's doing it in a powerhouse samurai sensei masterful way. He's tearing it down while edifying. Y'all going to have to learn this skill. This is what we do and promote the truth. Yeah. He said, even your poets speak about this allure that you do not know. Thank you, Sister Emily. They even, they even talk about him and they say we are his children. Hold on. Since we are the children of this allure that you do not know. We must not think that he is like an idol that's made out of gold, silver, or stone. He is, listen, this allure that you do not know, he is not like anything that humans have ever thought of or made. Woo! Do you tell you what we're going to do with this? In the past, this allure that you do not know in the past, this allure that you do not know, he overlooked all of this because of the ignorance of not knowing any better. He gives them an out right there. Shaul powerfully gives them an out. He got them pinned against the wall. They don't know. Hey, they are tied down now with these words. It was the word of Yahuwah that tied them down. It's the word that's sharper than any double edged sword. Woo! It's the word that does all these things. He said, in the past, this allure that you do not know overlooked all of this because of the ignorance of not knowing anybody. He goes, y'all didn't know no better. But now, since I'm here talking to you, since y'all want to drag me down here, pump me, put me on front street in front of everybody, embarrassing me, these philosophers, these guys that know it all, trying to make me look terrible, but now, since you got me down here, let me tell you something. This allure that you do not know overlooked your ignorance, right? But now he commands every one of you and people everywhere to repent and turn to him. Woo! Woo! That's a powerful witness, and it ain't being preached. And this allure that you do not know, he has appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world in fairness. Because this allure that you don't know, he's fair. But he's appointed a day when he will judge the world in fairness. Thank you, Yeshua. And in righteousness, he's going to do what's right. And he appointed, y'all put your seatbelts on. Everybody put your seatbelts on. Sister Patrice says her ruah is on fire. Everybody put your seatbelts on. Y'all just ain't heard it like this. Y'all haven't heard it. Y'all been reading over it and skimming it. But when I translated it from the scriptures and me being sent as an emissary to bring you the truth, now you're getting the fire out of that word. Now it's hitting you. You've been waiting all your life to hear this word. It's hitting you and you know it. 
You can feel Brother Shaul right there. You can feel it. He said, this is the Lord. You don't know. He's appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world in fairness and righteousness. And he has appointed someone from heaven that came to earth as a man who was called Yahusha of Nazareth to do the judging for him. This allure that you don't know. This allure that you don't know has given us proof of this by raising this Yahusha from the dead and making him Yahuwah Mashiach, the Mashiach, the Savior. That's what he made him, this allure that you don't know. Woo! What y'all gonna do with this? <laughs> this allure that some of y'all that are brand new, listen to me, you don't know him. You don't know him. But now, I've told you about him. He's overlooked your ignorance of running after Jesus and after Allah and after Buddha and after Krishna and after all the nonsense and the pastors and the churches. He's overlooked your ignorance, this allure that you did not know. He's overlooked it. But now, he calls you to repent and turn to him. Because he's appointed this Yahusha of Nazareth. And we've been given evidence of it. Because he raised that Yahusha from the dead and then he made him Yahuwah Mashiach. Y'all know what happened? <laughs> Sister Sylvia, y'all know what happened, Brother Jamie? Sister Amber, Jermaine, Blake, y'all know what happened after this? He's in front of the council of worshipers of Zeus with that kind of boldness. And that came, brother y'all know who? Sister Annette Green, what y'all gonna do with? He's in front of the Zeus worshipers. <laughs> He's in front of him. After he gave this speech, this is what happened. As soon as they heard Shaul speak about the resurrection of the dead, some of them laughed and mocked him. <laughs> Look at that fool. He talking about somebody being resurrected. And that's what most of the people listening to me you run after and you focus on. That's a rookie in the game of life. Yeah, most people run after that laugh. The people mocking, you stare over at them. Why are they talking? Why are they laughing at me? My family, they don't understand me. I went to them. Not Shaul. He knew the assignment from Yahuwah Mashiach. His job is to deliver the message with the power and the fire of the Ruach. That's his job. That's your job. You deliver the message the right way. That's what you call to do tonight and today wherever you are. Stop taking it personal. Stop acting like this message is about you. Your job, my job, our job is to preach the Bashura, the great news of Yahuwah Mashiach coming to earth as a man dying an embarrassing death on a tree, a stake. But Yahuwah Rose him from the dead, making him the Mashiach. Don't ever take it personal another day of your life if this message meant anything to you. Never. I had to go talk to my family before I came to talk to y'all. 
Brother Benjamin in the building with that super. Appreciate you. I had to go. I couldn't come on here until I said, what do you learn from that guy? My nine-year-old, he said, ain't no power in statues. That's what my, my son said. My wife said, we got to be wise with our witness. We can't be emotional. My wife, Lena, before I came on here, that's the words they gave me. And then I went live. But most of the people listening to me, even at this point, you be caught up on the laughers and the mockers. But you won't keep reading the verse. When you just keep reading, you get the assignment. As soon as they heard show speak about the resurrection of the dead which we put our hope in. Some of them laughed and mocked him, but others of them said, we'd like to hear you speak more on this sometime later at another time. What's that mean? What's that mean? When somebody says, well, I like, I like to think on this. I want to talk to you later about this. Oh, you done struck him. Oh, they done got struck in the heart. They're being cool. They don't want to look silly. So they're going to act cool. But they, they don't got nailed in the heart. How do we know? Next verse. After that, Shaul left the council meeting of his own free will. They drug him in there, holding him, pulling him down there. After he said what he said, he was able to walk out. Last verse, 34. But after hearing this, some of the men there put their faith in Yahuwah Mashiach. That's the assignment. Y'all believe this? Here in front of a council of Zeus worshipers and now in the scriptures we get to read, what are y'all going to do? What? After hearing this, some of the men there put their faith in the master, Yahuwah Mashiach, and they went with Shaul. They said, we walking out with you. <laughs> some of the men there said, hey, I want, I want, I, hallelujah, I repent. I'm going with this Yahuwah Mashiach. That's my master. On the spot, some of them right there said, I'm in. That's it. I don't heard what I need to hear. When you got the right word, and some of y'all going to be like that with my message. Some of y'all going to go to truesalvation.net. Lena, drop it in the chat. Some of y'all going to truesalvation.net, and you're going to give your life to Yahuwah after this message. You're just going to go. Just read the, just read the page. You good. You said, man, I done heard a fire message. Ain't nobody on earth bringing it like this. I'm in with Yahuwah Mashiach. I'm in. Let's go. Got my shoulder itching. That message is so good. My shoulder itch. Must be the spirits all over me. Hold on. That ain't enough. Some of the men there put their faith in the master, Yahuwah Mashiach, and left. They went with Shaul right there. They started walking with him. They became disciples under his tutelage right there. Now, y'all want to know? Listen to this next part. Listen to this next part. One of them that put their faith in the master, Yahuwah Mashiach, was a member of of the Arupagus Council, a man named Dionysus. His name is paying homage to Zeus. One of the council members who worshiped Zeus on the spot had never met Shaul ever. One of the council members of the worshipers of Zeus converted on the spot. Gave his life to Yahuwah and left with Shaul. I'm rolling with you. <laughs> I 
I'm with you, Sean. Let's go. I'm out. Zeus, you done. Some of y'all are going to drop Jesus tonight or today. That ain't nothing but Zeus. You dealing with Jesus, you in the council of Zeus, just like this man and those people. But there were seven men that said, no, we out. And one of them was a council member. Now, wait a minute. Also, a woman named Demarius, a, a very significant woman named Demarius, and several others also put their faith in the master, in the master, Yahuwah Mashiach. Shaul converted a bunch of people. Man, what are we going to do with this message? I'm serious. The, 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 the chapter's over. I just want to know what my brothers and sisters here on the live and on the replay, what are we going to do with this message that hardly anybody talks about? People ain't, they want to talk about Shaul over them other books and try to paint him to be a false prophet. A false prophet ain't doing that. <laughs> They're not doing that. That was one of the greatest speeches all of us could ever imagine hearing. That is a lesson of lessons on how to witness in a room full of vultures, in a room full of snakes, in a room full of pagans. That just told us. Go on and edify. Man, I see y'all love. Y'all some real religious people here. Y'all really believe in what y'all believe in. Y'all really believe it. Well, let me tell you about what I think you're trying to get to. You're trying to get to the one. Let me tell you about the one that you really don't know. Bam, you in with that mess. Y'all should go back, watch this replay, take notes, and get your witness tight. This is a get your witness tight message. This is one of the greatest trainings I've ever had the privilege of doing. That's right, Rush. He shut it down. Drop it. What y'all say? The young people say, Boop. he dropped the mic. <laughs> Nerob said that wasn't a mere message. That was fire. Come on. Are y'all kidding me? What do he do, Felicia? He say, like, Felicia, you know you're going to get this. He be like, bye, Felicia. He out. He walked out the door. They drug him in there, want to chain him up. The council that worships Zeus, several of them said, hey, uh, we'd like to hear some more on this later. You know they was like, come here. Man, you done hit us all in, the, in our souls because we're the ones been promoting this unknown Alua. We've been promoting that. We didn't know him. <laughs> Amber said, bye, Zeus. Yes. They were saying, bye, Zeus. Zeus ain't never talked to us. He ain't never made us feel nothing. He ain't never provided nothing. This man made us understand exactly who this unknown Alua is. <laughs> I'm done, man. I can't all take it. I had to come over here and give you all that, and I got to get out of here. I'm telling you, I just got to, I got to bask in this. I got to meditate on this. Because Yahuwah blessed me. I said, out. I'm translating, and it's getting dark here. And usually I flip the lights on. I couldn't get up to turn the lights on. I started translating the dark. I couldn't move. I was in it. This is the greatest privilege. I said, Lena, this is the greatest privilege ever for me to translate these words. What? This whole thing to come to life. That's why I'm like, look, everybody stop. We got to go. We got to get this word everywhere. I got it on the screen. If you're a real one, you understand the assignment. We got to get, we got to do a show. TSNT.org. I'm going to promote it like with all I got more and more and more. I'm going to get more and more bolder. I am not pulling no punches. I know what we're doing. We're going to pour so much money into advertising and campaigns. We're going to put it everywhere. 
And we're going to tell them about the allure they don't know. Y'all with me? The world don't know. That to the world, it's an unknown allure. Just like my sister Amber put up today. It's so, quote, sacred to them. They don't know that they don't want to say the name. They can't say the name. They are all worshiping an unknown allure. Love you, Brother Marquise. <laughs> Renee, you already know. Love you. Hey, they, we got to go let TSNT is, is really the Mahashim. Chapter 17 message is to tell the world, we're going to remember this. I'm going to hang it up. I'm going to deal with this on another level. We're going to act 17 Shaul message to the world. We 17 what? 20. Yeah. Eighteen through thirty four, it's lights out. We ask seventeen, eighteen through thirty four, it's on. That's who we are, brother Blake. I saw you today. The staff told me, brother Blake, he been he got more seed to sow. Brother Blake, I I'm so proud of you and your wife, your awesome wife Stephanie. You have no, I, I see it. I get to see it. From I'm just in the trenches. It's going to, like probably a year and a half from now, I'll be able to really circle back. Sherry, you know what to do with that. <laughs> you know what to do. Kingdom business. Who is Brazil, who is Brazil Z Hart? What's your name? Tell me your name. I got to know your name. Y'all got to tell me who you are. Come on, Carlos. I'm about to get out of here. I'm just doing my shout outs. I'm going out. <laughs> Come on. I mean, we. this is a, that's how we do TSNT. We do it on Act 17. That's how we're doing it. That's how we do the whole True Scriptures project. We're doing it, unless something else knocks the hell out of me. Just bam, just boom. That's it. Because people don't even talk about that message. Because they don't know how to translate it right. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man, I'm tore up. That, everybody out there worshiping the unknown allure in capital letters. Wow. And guess what we say? Uh, who you call on? Oh man, you know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Oh, that's okay, okay, good. You know what? Uh, I can see you're very zealous about. You're really passionate about, right? But you know what I found? You don't really know Him. <laughs> you don't really know Him. Who you? I know your heart. Is you wanting to go after the creator of all and the same true? Yeah, but you don't really know him. How can I know you if I don't know your name? It's the end of the story right there. How can I know you if I don't know your real name? Do you ever really know anybody without knowing their real name? Imagine if you got married to somebody, ladies. He told you his name was Philip. And you done fell in love with this Philip. And you go down to get your marriage certificate. He pulls out a license with Mark Smith on it. How would you feel? How would you feel? And you're going to look at that and go, what is that? It's got his picture on it with a different name. You done fell in love. Y'all done been together for 
18 months. Y'all done fell deeply in love. You fell in love with Philip Thomas. And you go to get married to consummate and he puts an ID down that says Mark Smith. <laughs> Blake says to me, be like, BPO, right? You'd be like, what? And he looks at you and he goes, why well, didn't think you were mine? I'm still me. I mean, I'm here. No. I got to call you a different name. That wasn't ever really, because see, the sham is the name. The parsham is the person. The person is their name. The Hasham is the name, which is the name above all names, Yahuwah. So he understands by creating us in his, in his image that our names are going to be our person. And without your name, you are not identified. <laughs> Amber said, what else are you lying about? Right. Everybody that goes to the Christian churches, you got to go, what else they lying about? All right, I'm out. Y'all going to bring it? Are we going to get the word out? It's TSNT.org. Big, big shout out. There's some people yesterday, man, they got down the trenches today. Brother Blake, uh, Sylvia Sale, Sale or Sellis. She just went platinum. She said, hey, man, she was digging. She said, I'm getting there. We got to the end of the month to wrap up this campaign. Y'all going to go in? Are we going to go in on TSNT.org? That's up to y'all. I'm going to keep my head down, and we're going to get this word out here. You get an opportunity to be in there with us. And if you see how they're rolling in the book of, of Mahashim, in the book of Acts, they going from town to town and they working. They are serious about getting Yahuwah's name all over the place. They serious. Are you that serious? Or are you just kind of playing a role every day? Well, I contribute here and there and I'll talk to one or two people. But I ain't going to go weigh in. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to drop seeds all throughout the day and then support the greatest project in the history of the world. Ain't nobody translating it. They won't even put Yahuwah Mashiach's name in here. They misleading people left and right. They keep putting Greek names all throughout. Even the ones that are coming out, they just put Greek names. And, it, and they got I at the end. I know. It's paying homage. So I'm done. Love y'all. And I might be back tomorrow. Maybe. This is a slim one tomorrow. Because I got to do a bunch of translating to keep the project moving. I'll talk to y'all soon. We're going to keep going up. Love y'all. Bye-bye.